U.S. President Joe Biden ended NATO's summit in Lithuania, assuring Ukraine of more direct military aid against Russia's aggression. However, Kiev once again swallowed its disappointment over slipping away from the 31-nation alliance. President Biden lashed out at Russian President Vladimir Putin, accusing him of having a craven lust for land and for power. Meanwhile, Ukraine's President Zelensky, who went back with assurances over post-war pathway into NATO and a new military aid, he came out and said that Ukraine had established a foundation of security for the first time since its transition as an independent nation and that's only going to help it further against Russia. The people of Ukraine remain unbroken, unbroken. U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday ended this week's NATO summit in Lithuania with a vow of unwavering support for Ukraine and a promise of the military alliance's unity in the face of Russian President Vladimir Putin's aggression. When Putin and his craven lust for land and power unleashed his brutal war on Ukraine, he was betting NATO would break apart. We will not waver. We will not waver. I mean that. Our commitment to Ukraine will not weaken. We will stand for liberty and freedom today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky joined leaders of the world's most powerful military bloc. Ahead of meetings Wednesday, he'd argued emphatically his nation needed membership in the alliance. For that, though, he will have to wait. NATO members, including the United States, said that Ukraine could not join NATO in the midst of a war, but that it could win membership once the fighting was resolved. I look forward to the day when we're having the meeting celebrating your official, official membership in NATO. Thank you so much for this help. At a meeting of the two leaders, Zelensky thanked the U.S. and its citizens. You spend this money for our lives, and uh, I think that we save the, the last for, for, for Europe and for, for all the world. At a press conference, Zelensky called the summit positive, saying it was unambiguous that Ukraine will one day be in NATO. And he's leaving with more than pledges. Zelensky thanked German Chancellor Olaf Scholz for supplying additional launchers and missiles for the Patriot air defense system. The arms cannot come too soon. These Ukrainian soldiers told a Reuters camera that they were in dire need of ammunition to sustain a counteroffensive against Russian forces occupying swaths of the country's east. Ukraine's state border service on Wednesday released aerial footage of what it said was a Russian tank rolling onto a damaged bridge near the city of Kherson. The video shows the tank hit by an explosion. It then attempts to retreat before running off the road. Its crew then abandons the vehicle. But Moscow on Wednesday staged its own demonstration of resolve. The Russian Navy held a launch ceremony for a new missile cruiser for its Black Sea Fleet, based in Russian-occupied Crimea. The vessel is reportedly capable of launching eight cruise missiles at once. Ukraine has repeatedly accused Russia of targeting civilians and infrastructure with long-range missile strikes. Russia's foreign ministry said on Wednesday the NATO summit showed the Western alliance turning to what it called Cold War schemes and pledged that Moscow would, quote, continue to strengthen the country's military organization and defense system. Ukraine should be able to join one day, but NATO leaders have dashed its hopes of an immediate invitation. Their guarded statements at the Lithuania summit irked President Volodymyr Zelensky. We can state that the results of the summit are good, but if there was an invitation, that would be ideal. But there were some tangible wins. So what were they? NATO removed one hurdle for Kiev on its path to membership. Ukraine won't need to fulfill what is called a membership action plan. From now on, NATO and Ukraine will meet in the Council to discuss and decide as equals. This is a significant step to move Ukraine closer to NATO. And a new NATO-Ukraine Council sat for the first time, a format that should tighten cooperation between Kyiv and the Alliance. Kyiv also won security assurances. We're going to help Ukraine build a strong, capable defence across land, air and sea. A declaration by G7 leaders at the NATO summit launched a framework for bilateral negotiations to provide military and financial support, intelligence sharing and a promise of immediate steps if Russia should attack again.
and as expected, there were pledges of more direct military aid. But the most urgent task now is to ensure enough weapons uh, to uh, Ukraine, to President Zelensky and his ar armed forces. Ukraine to defend its territory. France will join Britain in supplying Ukraine with long-range cruise missiles, which can travel 155 miles and strike deep behind Russian front lines. Britain promised support, including more than 70 combat and logistic vehicles and thousands of rounds of ammunition for Challenger 2 tanks. It will also launch a project through NATO to establish a medical rehabilitation centre for Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, about F-16, F it's also to, to me, you address to me, a question, or to you. F-16, no, 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 answer please. <laughs> A coalition of 11 nations will start training Ukrainian pilots to fly F-16 fighter jets in Denmark, with a new training center to be set up in Romania. Germany has also offered a $770 million military package for Ukraine, including two Patriot launchers, infantry fighting vehicles, more battle tanks and ammunition. Rasan Botnik, Director of Ukrainian Institute of Politics, now joins us on this broadcast. Thank you so much, Mr. Botnik, for speaking with us here on News 18 Global. How do you look at the outcome of the NATO summit for Ukraine? Do you think this is a you win some, you lose some kind of situation? Hello, colleagues. Uh, it's not easy to estimate results of this NATO summit uh, for nowadays because a lot of agreements are behind the scenes still. But uh, for the first side, uh, we have a mixed result. Of course, Ukraine expected uh, of invitation uh, to become a member of uh, NATO or to obtain a certain date of entry into NATO. And we haven't achieved it for nowadays. Moreover, we haven't achieved even the security guarantees for Ukraine. The project of these guarantees uh, was discussed in Ukraine and with our Western partners uh, more than one year before the special group of Yermak Rasmussen prepared it. But at the same time, Ukraine obtained a very deep, uh, very big uh, compensation package. Uh, we obtained the new uh, military uh, uh, supplies for more than $3 billion uh, from the United States, Great Britain, Germany, Norway, Norway and other countries. And we made a new declaration between Ukraine and G7 group uh, on the support Ukraine for the future, uh, for the defending of the future aggression. Of course, the political results of this summit is still hidden in, in, uh, and uh, uncertain. But the military results is very clear and very helpful for, for Ukraine in any case. Right, but as far as the optics go, do you feel that this could perhaps give uh, the upper hand to Russia or to Vladimir Putin? Because, uh, yes, hurdles may have been removed uh, as far as the membership to NATO is concerned, but the membership still remains one step too far for Ukraine, or so it seems. You're right. Uh, moreover, uh, it's uh, some kind of... Uh, Russia can use this situation uh, like, uh, like uh, some kinds of victory. Uh, in, in their in her aggression, because one of the main goal of this Russian uh, aggression against Ukraine was to uh, don't let let Ukraine to go to NATO, and also we are talking not about only about Ukraine, but, but we are talking also about Moldova and Georgia. At the same time, these countries also hasn't obtained any invitation to NATO. Uh, and it looks like from the one side that maybe NATO countries is not only are scary because of Russian aggression, Russian uh, nuclear uh, weapon threats, but also uh, they show us uh, the readiness to start new a new attempt for negotiation with Russia. And uh, their, uh, their decision on Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, maybe is a stem. A step to negotiation with Russia. It looks slow, uh, so in the, these days. But at the same time, uh, the NATO countries and the G7 countries made a decision, official decision, to support Ukraine uh, as long as it will be needed. And it's also a very uh, important sign for Russia, for Moscow. 